Welcome to a Stanford Medicine 25 video on Ankle Brachial Index. Hi, I'm John Cook. I'm a professor of medicine in the Division of Cardiovascular Medicine here at Stanford. And today I'm going to show you how to detect peripheral arterial disease in the office setting using the Ankle Brachial Index, which is simply a measure of ankle pressure divided by the pressure at the arm, the brachial pressure. There are about 8 million people in the country with peripheral arterial disease, but only about 30% have been diagnosed. But with a simple uh, handheld Doppler and a blood pressure cuff, measurements at the ankle and at the arm can give you an ankle brachial index to tell you whether or not the person in your office has peripheral arterial disease. Everyone over the age of 60 and anyone over the age of 50 that's diabetic or a smoker should have this test done to determine if they have peripheral arterial disease because we have life and limb saving medical therapies for these individuals like ACE inhibitors and statins and antiplatelet agents and even beta blockers can be used in patients with peripheral arterial disease. So uh, let's get started. So for the ankle brachial index we need a handheld Doppler uh, and we also need some ultrasonic gel and we need blood pressure cuff. We want the patient in a dimly lit uh, quiet room uh, for about 10 minutes relaxed so that the blood pressure stabilizes. Okay, so what we're going to do first is measure the pressure at the arm and we're going to use the same technique to measure pressure at the arm that we're going to use to measure pressure at the ankles. So I'm uh, putting the blood pressure cuff around the arm right now. You want it to be snug and now I'm going to put some ultrasound gel right here in the antecubital space uh, over the brachial artery. So my fingers are on the brachial artery there. Having done that, now I can listen for the signal with my handheld Doppler. Now that's a nice signal. It's a normal triphasic pulse waveform that we're hearing uh, with our Doppler. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to blow up the blood pressure cuff until we no longer hear a signal. Okay, and we're going to gradually release the pressure, gradually release the pressure until we hear the signal again. Okay, he's got a blood pressure of 100 millimeters systolic. So that becomes our denominator for the ankle brachial index. Now there are two vessels that we're interested in uh, in measuring the ankle brachial index. So two vessels uh, in the foot. Uh, one is the dorsalis pedis, which is right about here where my finger is. The posterior tibial is right behind the uh, medial malleolus. If you can't feel the dorsalis pedis, uh, bilaterally, it could be normal. That could be a normal finding. But you should always be able to feel a posterior tibial artery. If you can't feel the posterior tibial artery, uh, that's always abnormal. So once again, you apply the blood pressure cuff. And in this case, we're going to be applying it right above the malleoli. And again, you want it snug. And uh, you'll put the gel right behind the medial malleolus and the, uh, over the uh, dorsum of the foot. So let's just take a listen to the waveforms here. So that's a very nice pulse waveform, strong, biphasic, uh, and that's uh, normal in an adult. And um, let's just take a listen over the posterior tibial. Nice pulse waveform there. Now, Let's check the pedal pressure. Okay, I've blown the cuff up and I'm slowly releasing it. And that was about 110 millimeters of mercury. That roar that you just heard, that was venous return. I'll actually demonstrate that. This is the arterial signal. You can hear that. I'm going to squeeze the foot and you'll hear the venous return 
moving past that uh, Doppler transducer. That's Venus return. Uh, we'll talk about of the Venus exam at another time, uh, but one can determine if someone has a Venus obstruction or Venus insufficiency uh, using this uh, handheld Doppler. Um, now, I've shown you how to do the posterior tibial uh, uh, pulse waveform, uh, get the pressure there. You do the same thing over the anterior tibial. You do that for both pedal pulses uh, in, in each extremity. And then what is done to create the ankle brachial index is you take the highest of the brachial pressures that you've measured, and that becomes your denominator. The numerator is the highest ankle pressure in the right leg and the highest ankle pressure that you've measured in the left leg uh, that, to give you the right and the left ABIs respectively. Sometimes uh, you'll f uh, you may find uh, that the uh, pressures are slightly different uh, between the anterior tibial and the posterior tibial artery uh, and by convention we express the higher of those two pressures over the brachial pressure to get the ankle brachial index for that foot and we calculate the ankle brachial index for each, each foot. To conclude with the example in our video, the patient's highest right ankle pressure was 110, which is divided by the highest of the blood pressures in both arms, which was 100, giving a right ankle brachial index of 1.1. An ankle brachial index of 1 to 1.4 is normal, whereas a value of 0.9 to 1 is acceptable. Neither require any intervention. A value of 0.8 to 0.9 suggests some arterial disease and treatment of risk factors is advisable. A value of 0.5 to 0.8 suggests moderate arterial disease, where a value of less than 0.5 suggests severe arterial disease. Either category should be referred to a vascular specialist. And finally, a value greater than 1.4 can be an indication of calcification or vessel hardening, which also should be referred. This has been a Stanford Medicine 25 video on Ankle Brachial Index. Thanks for watching. The preceding program is copyrighted by the Board of Trustees of the Leland Stanford Junior University. Please visit us at med.stanford.edu.